Hey, Gold Team, we are back with the tip of the month, and it's Mark Mayfield. You might have seen him at the holiday party here uh, a week or two ago. And Mark is uh, one of our uh, preferred vendors with a preferred rate. And uh, Mark, man, thanks for making time with us today. Happy to. Thank you. So, Mark, what's uh, what's your take on what all's going on in the world? It's been a crazy year, that's for sure. Been I a mean, little bit different. Yeah, <laughs> we started we started the year out with mortgage rates at two point eight seven five. Yeah. They hit uh, in mid sevens last month. Now they're down to the low sixes. Fannie Mae just came out of the report a couple of weeks ago saying that they see rates at four and a half percent by March, the end of March. Wow. I didn't so, hear that one. Yeah, a little little over three months away from now, they see rates at uh at four and a half. So they're definitely going down, which is good. Well, that would be a big deal. I mean, it, if that's the way that they're talking about it, that would be great timing, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The key that I've been running uh, talking to a lot of the buyers with is now is really key for buying because there's a lot less people going to buy that house. If you look back eight months ago when rates were at four and a half, a house that was priced right, that was updated in good condition, man, that thing would have 30 to 40 offers on it, starting at least less price. And right now, you know, maybe we're seeing two, three, four offers on it. There's just a lot less competition. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if people wait, they're going to be having to pay up a lot. And they're going to be fighting to get that. And they're just going to get, you know, time and time again of not getting that that actual home where they could buy now and then do a no closing cost refinance. I always, I always monitor everybody's rate when rates go sure. down, we offer a no closing cost refi. So they really could get the, the house at a much better price now and uh, still get that lower rate when they get do. a refi. You know, the uh, I forget who it was, one of our agents, I think it was Elizabeth Wolf said to uh, marry the house, date the rate. Yeah, because, you know, if you got a house out there and you know that you can get it. And you don't even have as much competition as you did, you know, eight months ago, you can always refinance. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. Marry the house, date the rate, divorce date the rate. Your, divorce your right. Your right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So what should, what do you think as agents, you know, what should they be thinking right now? Cause I mean, everybody's looking at, there's only a few weeks left in the year. We're going to be rolling into January. It sounds like the rates might be heading in the right direction. Is there any, anything that you see Mark that um, people should be thinking about? Well, the big thing that I'm working with realtors is I want to help increase their conversion you know, if they get 100 leads and they're closing 20, we want to take that to 30 to 40. And how I do that is through education. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fear and uncertainty in the marketplace right now. I want to replace that with confidence, motivation, and excitement. And how I do that is educating them on the house, uh, uh, what's going on in the housing market and what's going on in the rate market. Um, and then move into the psychology of the buyer. And a lot of buyers have a pre-approval that says they can buy a house. Right but they don't know why they should buy a house, right? So I want to walk them through that and Good. go over their personal economics of it. As far as the housing market goes, I walk them through a, a presentation I call the Bullproof Buyer. And I show them all the key demographics of what's going on with the housing market, how housing starts have not hit the 50-year uh, average of 1.5 ever since the, the Great Recession. You know, Right before the Great Recession, we had... Two million plus homes being built every year, record year, record mm -hmm. years leading up to the Great Recession. But since then, we were at 500,000 for a number of years, and we've had almost 14 years where it's not been up to the, the, the average. So we have a lot, we have a deficit in housing. We don't have that much inventory, right? And we have a lot of buyers. If You, you know what's interesting about that too, Mark, is, um, you know, that that number started to creep back up when the when the housing was on fire. And I think, I think it was August or whatever, whatever month that was, it started to go down again. Yep. Yeah. When rates set, uh, builders started getting really scared. They, scared. they started offering a lot of things like two, one buy downs where they buy the yeah. rate down the first year yeah. and the second year. Um, yeah. So they were, they were really worried about it. If, if you look at the demographics, the people born 
the average millennial now is 34, which the average person buys their first home at 33 years old. If you hey, look, did, hey, Mark, did you say you wanted to share your screen? Yeah. Let me um, show you a couple. I want to make sure that you're set up, I think, to share. Yeah. Yeah. You should be able to share from your side. Okay. Let me go to the share. Should All pop right. up. There we go. Yeah, this is the presentation Perfect. that I, I walked through called the Bulletproof Buyer. I, I'm just leaving it in this uh, versus screen share. Yeah. Um, but, you know, right now when when somebody goes to, it, it, this is what your clients are reading, right? I just Googled housing market. Yeah. And the top thing is, will it crash in 2023? <laughs> right? Our home, process, home prices are dropping fast, right? So they don't understand what's going on, on the coast versus what's going on here. And they see this housing booms over all this. And that's why they're getting fear. That's why they're getting scared. So the first thing I walk them through is, is, you know, what's going on with rates, how inflation impacts rates, higher rate, mm -hmm. higher inflation is high rates, lower rates, lower inflation. I'll walk them through the Fed hikes and how the Fed hiking rates doesn't mean mortgage rates are going up. It actually historically means that they're going down because whenever the Fed increases uh, Fed funds, th that it, inflation goes down and then rates go down. Um, I walk them through the inversion, the likelihood of the recession. Um, this is where I get into the inventory, the housing mm -hmm. inventory in the building for a number of years. And you can see that they just never, they haven't got back up. Never happened. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, most of this, you guys know, I, but I walk you through, through each client through it, just going through the inventory that we have 3 million less homes today than we did in, you know, for sale than in the peak of uh, 2007 and get them to understand part of this is just we're good for probably the next 22 plus years mm -hmm. as far as housing prices goes just because of the amount of people that were born mm -hmm. right 34 years ago when you look it's funny gen x there was a number of years where we hit three million it was really low and that's right the average gen x are turned 33 right in 2006 so not only do we have this oversupply of housing we had less people mm. right than we normally have and then if you look at the millennials, we have 4 million for a long time coming. So it's just a lot of, a lot more people. The way I show it is, you know, there's 14 million more households and 3 million more homes. Mm. This That's is just, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. This is just a good story for long-term housing prices. I mean, the only question would be is if these people don't have the, the post millennials, if they don't have kids, but until then, I mean, you know, you got 20 or 30 years of a really good, mm -hmm. um, housing market just because of uh the number of people demand. yeah the next is addressing the psychology of the borrower again they know what they can buy they have a pre-approval that says they can but they don't know why they should mm -hmm. and part of that is just getting into their personal economics uh, for example I had this guy out he was looking to buy a house out in Wentzville his it was a first time home buyer he was paying 1750 in rent and what they do is they compare that to their payment that they want at a house that they want to be at which mm -hmm. Is not is comparing apples to oranges. So the first thing I always say is, you know, like my job is not to, to to convince you to buy a home and just show you all the good things. My job is to educate you on the pros and the cons, and let you make your own educated decision. And one of those options is that you don't buy. That is a mm -hmm. complete possibility, right? So if you didn't buy, would you feel comfortable staying at the place you're at now for the next five plus years? <laughs> Almost always, the answer is no, because that's why they're talking to you. <laughs> right 95 percent right. of the time so this guy said i want to place a little bit nicer we went on the low side and said maybe it'd be 2000 right and then i said well mortgage is going to stay the same if anything it's going to go down because we could refinance it when rates go down but rent's always going up right what's the, you know how much do you think rent's going up and this was st charles county so i just googled it and mm -hmm. it turns out it's five percent right okay so he's seeing it live in google and saying okay these are real numbers so what it, what he starts at 1750, right? Five years from now is going to be 2,500. Mm -hmm. What he's paying. So the average over that time is 2250. That's what he should be comparing his new house payment to because he was looking at, you know, a $400,000 house, 5% down. So, you know, we we're, we we're borrowing uh 380 and this was a couple of weeks ago and rates were a little higher, mm -hmm. 6.875. So his payment with everything would have been a little over 3000. And that scared him. Remember, mm -hmm. think about it. If he's comparing seventeen fifty to this, his payment's going up thirteen hundred bucks. Plus, he's reading all these headlines that the housing market's going to crash. That's why people say, "I'm not ready yet. I need to save up more. 
I'll rent for another year. I'm afraid the housing market, all that's fear. That's mm -hmm. emotional decision. And in us as the professional, especially me as the loan officer, I want to come in earlier in the process for the realtor and help them convert these people, mm -hmm. right? The average realtor puts way too much on themselves. That not only do they have to find the gem of the house and, and all that other stuff and go through that entire process, but they 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 think they're responsible for for converting the the client and getting the client excited about buying a home. Mm -hmm. Where really that's something where the lender could step in and show them the math of everything, and get them excited about all of that. So I just walked them through that. I walked them through a rent versus own, and if you could see here, uh, you know their rent would be twenty two fifty, but one of the things they didn't factor in is they would get more of a tax savings by owning a home, right? Even with the higher standard deduction with rates at this high and the loan amount, this loan amount, they'd be writing off their income. So uh, writing off their mortgage interest. So they would save 600 bucks a month on that. Plus they get principal pay down, which they don't get on renting. So mm -hmm. when you factor those two things, the payment's not a ton different. It's 130 bucks difference. And where I really get them, and this is what really makes gets anybody off the, the fence as you show them, hey, if you rent for the next five years, you're going to spend one hundred thirty-four thousand dollars. You're going to have nothing to show for that. Zero zilch, right? You're making your landlord money is all you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Now, this guy, if he would have bought, if he buys, if he did buy, he was going to spend a little fifty thousand dollars more, but he's going to pay down twenty-two thousand in principal, and he's going to get a tax benefit. So his costs actually come out to be slightly less when you factor those in. And then I say, hey, you know, assuming you get a 4% increase in, in, in your property value, which I always walk them through like World War II to 2016. I stopped at 2016 because that doesn't include the recent run-up, but it does include the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. The average return on a single family residence is 5.7%. So I'm going to be conservative and say four. So that $400,000 house now is 486000 and you owe three fifty seven, so you have one hundred thirty thousand dollars worth of equity. Yeah, versus one hundred thirty four thousand and nothing, nothing, right? If this doesn't get them excited, there's not much that will, right? <laughs> but this is what helps to get them out of fearing that making that emotional strategy and yeah. or the emotional decision and start looking at the logical decision. The next thing I go to, which we don't have a ton last few months of uh, appraisal gaps, but the clients still think about it because mm -hmm. they've had people that they know people that have bought within this year and had had an appraisal gap and they're fearful of it. So I want to go in and say, before we are even making an offer, let's consider the worst case scenario, right? And let's come up with a strategy around that. So quick example. Well, first I, I walk them through what the difference between market price and a comparable price. And I, you know, my background's in finance, specializing in personal financial planning when my graduate course is completed for my CFP. I explained them in my textbooks. Market value is what a willing buyer will pay and what a willing seller will sell for. That's the value of anything. That's the market value, right? Comparable value, well, if we've had record low inventory, maybe we got a house with 200 homes or a subdivision with 200 homes in it, but there hasn't been that many sales and maybe this is a, a, a two story and only a couple ranches have sold. So it makes it hard to get that, that value sometimes. Um, so I, I walk them through that and get them to understand that there's a difference. And just because something appraises for a certain amount doesn't mean that's actually what it's worth. It, it Once it's, there it is a sale, then it of itself is in its own comparable. Mm -hmm. So I had a guy, he was looking, uh, purchasing a $450,000 house, putting 20% down rates were just, few weeks ago when rates were a little higher, 6.7%. So his payment with everything would have been with real estate taxes and homeowners would have been uh, $2,859. His cash to close would be a little over 96. So I say, hey, let's say this thing comes in $25,000 less, right? Most people think I got to bring in an extra 25,000 then to avoid PMI. No, he doesn't. We can keep the purchase price the same, the loan amount the same, the rate the same, the payment the exact same and the cash to close only goes up about 11 1200 bucks how mm. is that we buy it out of lump sum pmi private mortgage insurance is an insurance policy you can pay it monthly that's what most people do or you can pay it in a lump sum 
And all we're doing here is just saying, hey, we're paying it in a lump sum up front. So you don't have to bring in 25 grand. You got to bring in 1100. And then I even go to the extreme and say, let's say it's really off. <laughs> and we it's $50,000 less, right? More than 10% less. You know, we could still keep it the same. And your down payment only goes up about $2,800. Again, it's just buying out that uh, lump sum PMI policy. So it doesn't really make a big difference. And if they say, hey, I don't want to pay any more down, you know, you can actually keep your down payment the same and just have a small difference in payment. There's a $19 between the first and the last one, the big $50,000 mm -hmm. last one. You just increase, all you do is you finance the PMI. You increase the loan amount with the PMI versus paying it a lump sum. So that's the big thing we're doing. We're getting people this now. We got a buyer that's motivated, right? He went from fear, yeah. uncertainty, through education, got motivated, excited, right? And 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 has certainty. Um, and then we now we got a play a person that we can remove appraisal rider for safely, right? If they're putting ten percent down or more, we can use the strategy to safely remove it. And then we go through and get them fully fully approved. I can turn around a pre approval in two hours on the weekends, happily for you, any of your guys. But I would like to take a week and get get a, get, get involved be, in, earlier in the process. Take what takes a week and get them fully approved. I still think that's key in today's market. There's still a couple offers on on average people are going against. And if you have no loan contingency and no appraisal writer, your offer is a thousand times more competitive mm -hmm. than the average one with just a pre approval. Mm -hmm. And all I ask is that they're making offers in the next sixty days. They have to, I get them to verbally commit to, you got to give us your, the documents we request for the underwriter to give us full commitment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do you feel like we're the right lending team for them? Because there isn't a cost to this. We don't charge them anything for it. But on average, if you, processors and underwriters and everything cost about 750 bucks for us to do this. And um, we just take that cost on because we want to do the work up front mm -hmm. so that your clients are, are able to make the most competitive offer. So now they got a, they're fully approved, subject to an appraisal and subject to title, and that's it. And they can close in ten days if they want. So these are the Excellent. big things that I've been working on with them. Well, and, and you know that that brings back you know Mark what you're saying about getting involved earlier in the process. You know, it's almost like if you, if you jump the fence and talk to the agents about why it's so important to have that buyer consult at the beginning. Oh, absolutely. You, wanna, you know, you just don't want to jump in the car and start showing them houses, you actually want to find out and ask the right questions to figure out where everybody is on the playing field. And that's really what you're saying. Get, let's yeah. get everybody in the right mindset so that we can jump at the same time. Yeah. And let me, and let me get those clients, you know, the people over the last year that, that, that have said, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, maybe it was eight months ago when it was, there was 30 people making that offer and they just got tired of it. Um, you know, maybe they got disenfranchised from that. Or maybe they're just worried about, you know, their payment going up. Uh, it, if we can get with those people and, and turn those people that have been lukewarm to cold for your agents and turn them into ready, willing, and, and, and happy and excited people to go buy homes, well, then we're all going to do more business. Yep. Totally agree. Good stuff, Mark. Yeah. Good Thank stuff, you. man. Yeah. If... if uh, People want to reach out to you after they watch this. What's uh, what's the best way to get in hold, hold of you, contact you? Uh, just uh, give me a call or shoot me a text. You can always email me as well, but, but definitely give me a call at 314-761-5491. Again, that's 314-761-5491. Perfect. All right, man. Mark? Right. Good stuff. I appreciate right. it. And I think the agents will really like this information because, you know, it's all about having the right mindset when you're sitting around talking to somebody and, and you Googling, you Googling that and seeing what everybody's seeing. We've got some work to do get to get them back into the right mindset. Exactly. I mean, in the end, it's still the American dream to own the house. They're just worried about making they're, they're worried decision. about making a full decision and, and yeah. thinking that, oh, man, if I would have waited, I would have gotten a better deal or I'm going to look foolish or whatever it is or I'm not comfortable with this payment. If we can remove those those things from them, we can help them make the logical decision, which versus rent is Dubai almost all the time. Right? Yes. 
but uh but you know we just want to well i mean just like you showed on the deal there i mean you pay one hundred thirty four thousand dollars or you look at the other column and you, you don't pay as much and you have all the equity and, yeah. uh, and ownership and, and some, some real estate that you didn't have before, which is a totally different ball game. Yeah. I mean, it's the number one millionaire creator in the United States yes. is real estate. Right. You know, most people that that's the vast majority of their net worth is in real estate. Yeah. So the more we help these people get into these homes, you know, safely, affordably, um, yeah. the better off they're going to be. The clients are going to be thanking you. Yep. No doubt about it. All right, Mark. Thanks for taking the time with us today. Absolutely, we'll get bro. this out. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, sir. Be good.